for some travelers from faraway countries, the trip to this Far East island will be a lifetime travel. So today I'd like to introduce you to Japan, the basic travel information for the first time visitors and how to get the most of Japan during a travel. Hello friends if you know me already, and nice to have you here if you are watching my video for the first time today. My name is Kengo, I'm a Japanese guy making a video about tips and ideas for visitors coming to Japan. If you started to think of traveling to Japan, or if you already have a plan to visit, I hope this video gives you some ideas. But please note that there are 100 different ways to travel for 100 different travelers. Now let's overview the travel situation in Japan. Japan is made up of many islands, but tourists mainly visit the four main islands and the southern islands chains that leads to Okinawa. 70% of the country is covered with deep mountains and forests, including volcanoes. This makes moving around the country not as easy as it looks on the map. However, Shinkansen, are high-speed railways, and local trains connect between places with many tunnels and bridges. In addition, there are nearly 100 passenger airports in every region of the country, and most destinations have direct flights from Tokyo. So, with some investigation on maps and timetables, you can make your own travel routes in Japan. Japan is considered as a relatively safe country. According to the article by American security company ADT in June 2023, Japan ranked as the most safe country in the world. It says, you can be assured of safety of you and your family. So, even if you are visiting Japan for the first time, or even if it's your first international trip, you can travel to every corner of the country as long as you observe basic safety behaviors, like not following anyone just as you do in your country. The site of US Department of State says level 1, which is exercise normal precautions. So you can focus on exploring different scenery, culture, and different foods. Japan's border is fully open now to international travelers. Many countries have visa waiver program to Japan, including US, Canada, Australia, and European countries, Singapore, and many more countries. If you are from there, you can even hop on the airplane tomorrow and fly to Japan, and stay for three to six months, depending on the country. If not, you can get tourist visa and visit. The number of tourists visiting Japan is increasing, but safety are not the only reason. Now let's see the attraction of traveling to Japan. What you can expect in your Japan trip? Travelers to Japan can experience various different kinds of sightseeing and activities. Probably the first place many travelers experience is a big city like Tokyo or Osaka, which becomes the gateway to the country for the majority of international travelers. You might get lost and puzzled by the incomprehensible language, the cityscape with neons and design that are different from the rest, and the overwhelming number of people. City is also the best place to do shopping. If you like anime figures, there are tons of stores in Tokyo. You will hardly see the products you've seen in your country. Tokyo is also a place foods and art crafts from all over Japan gathers. The second purpose of your trip is to see Japanese temples and shrines that reflect Japanese traditional Buddhism and Shinto belief. In Japan, there are still wooden temples that were built hundreds of years ago. You can immerse yourself in a sanctuary atmosphere that created from the prayers of people from ancient times. You can also see sophisticated art and Japanese garden that you feel peace in your mind. These can be seen especially in the old capitals of Kyoto and Nara. Japanese people respect and enjoy tradition. It would be interesting to touch the spiritual aspect of the local Japanese people. The third reason of traveling to Japan is the great nature. One of them is a symbol of Japan, Mount Fuji, that you can visit on a day trip from Tokyo. You might have seen tons of photos and videos already, but the impact of the beautiful form makes it worth visiting all the way to see in your own eyes. There are many deep mountains in the central part of Japanese islands, including volcanoes, that you can enjoy the view of dynamic nature and also, if you like to get more into physical activities, you can enjoy light trekking and skiing in winter. Of course, you cannot overlook the coastal scenery and beach activities too. When it comes to the nature, something greatly impact on the culture of Japan is hot springs. 
that Japanese people call onsen. You can enjoy the culture of public bathhouse in the city too. But something you can enjoy even more is staying at Japanese style inn called ryokan that are often come with natural hot springs. You can enjoy the unique travel style that Japanese people enjoy, having dinner and breakfast with local producers and cuisines, as you enjoy bathing in natural hot spring water many times. During travel, something becomes important part of your trip is Japanese food. For some travelers, that is the most important thing for travel. You can enjoy authentic Japanese foods such as sushi, tempura, and soba, and also casual foods such as ramen and Japanese style curry that are inspired by different ethnic foods. Some seafoods and traditional foods like eel might be a little challenging for some travelers, but it might be interesting to try for experience within your belief and considering physical condition. Japan is divided into 47 administrative regions called either To, Do, Fu, or Ken in Japanese. Only Tokyo calls the administrative name To. Only Hokkaido use Do, as already included in the name of Hokkaido. Only Kyoto and Osaka use Fu, and all others are Ken. Even though Japan is not a big country, each region inherits regional characteristics from all times. If the region is facing different seas, the climates differ greatly and people speak different accent. In most of the regions, there are specialty cuisines and souvenirs you can get that are unique to the region. Finding the difference between each region is one of the real fun of traveling in Japan. Also, what you can enjoy in foods and scenery change depends on the season you visit. Cherry blossom in spring, dark green and festivals in summer, autumn leaves, in winter, while Tokyo stays sunny most of the days, some regions not far from Tokyo are covered by deep snow in winter. You can enjoy different seasonal colors in different parts of Japan. Even though there are many reasons to come to Japan, you don't have to feel pressure to do everything. Sometimes, stay away from daily hustle and just being in another country and being among the local people's life or finding one favorite place makes the travel worth doing it. We already know the safety of Japan by now, but what are the comfort in Japan for each specific group? How the experience would be for seniors, travelers with less mobility, family with small children, LGBT group, and female soul travelers, and others? Let's start from the travelers with less mobility. The challenges of travel varies depends on the traveler's condition, but the most of the hotels and train stations come with elevators in the major cities Almost all stations have elevator and wheelchair accessible bathroom too. Many traditional sightseeing spots like temples, for example, Sensoji Temple in Asakusa, Fushimi Inari Shura in Kyoto, there are elevators prepared for the travelers with less mobility. From my limited experience abroad, Japanese cities are walkable and streets are smooth. Just be aware of the bicycle that is parked on the street or comes randomly from behind you. But there are cons like language barrier to ask for support and sometimes difficult to find elevators in stations like a maze. Also, not all restaurants are made accessible, so you might need some extra research and planning upon your travel. Also, if you use taxi, you can call wheelchair accessible taxi from apps in Tokyo, but taxi price can be expensive comparing other countries. Now let's see how comfortable Japan is for senior travelers. Japan is a great place to retreat yourself with hot springs, and exploring cultural interest. So it's a good place to visit for seniors too. Again, it greatly depends on each traveler's physical condition, but the key to success is try not to get too tired. Having some more allowance in itinerary, sometimes give a place that you have to walk so much for not much, spare some budget for using taxi, and also avoiding midsummer travel might make the travel more comfortable. For more of those tips, Please also see my other city videos and hotel train videos from my library. When I take my mother to travel, the major issue is the food. Food directly influences the physical condition. It's not about food poisoning or something, but she needs to eat Japanese food, even abroad. If you are eating something particular every morning, it might be a good idea to look for that in Japan or bring that with you. Something I worry when I travel some other country is food poisoning, but according to the Harvard Global Support Service, 
This article, Japan is excluded from the at risk destinations. So, usually you don't have to worry about it and you can focus on exploring different scenery, culture, and different foods. But Japan is not the best place for the Saturn diet. More stores started to care about gluten free, vegan, and halal foods, but still not many people are caring about that. If you have food allergy, seven ingredients marked as allergen in Japan is written in the package that is, shrimp, crab, wheat, buckwheat. Egg, milk, and peanuts. So, either use Google Glass or for more safety, I recommend you to ask the restaurant or shop person if you cannot eat certain foods. Now, let's see how comfortable Japan is for LGBT travelers. Legally, lots of debates are going on in Japan, but there aren't any laws that push you in the risk. For example, you don't get caught by showing public affection between two men or two ladies. Traveling either solo or same sex couple or in a group. Probably you don't feel any problem. However, too much public affection are not appreciated in Japan, especially in countryside. But that is the same for any couples. There might be some stereotypes, but the crime rate is one of the lowest in the world, including hate crimes. So, probably you can travel without any problem in Japan, and you don't get any specific attention. Traveling in Japan with your family, including small kids, can be a great experience. Japan is safe, child friendly, And has good transportation. You will find family attractions, kids friendly facilities, and unique food options. Just some traditional restaurants might say no to family with small children, so it's better to do some research in advance, not to feel disappointed. Also, you might want to remember that the language difference may decrease some fun from children. For example, in Disneyland in Tokyo, the song of Beauty and the Beast is in Japanese. Which even I was shocked. But that can be also a great cultural experience. Now, let's see how comfortable Japan is for female solo travelers. There are lots of places to eat by yourself in Japan, like ramen shop, curry shop, beef ball shops. Some hotels have ladies' floor, so you might want to take advantage of that. Also, during morning rush hour time, most of the trains come with ladies only car. The window has a sign. It's only effective during the rush hour time in the morning. Even though Japan is safe, you don't have to challenge trying to do something risky. There are lots of different kinds of people among 100 million Japanese. Do not follow anybody, no matter how friendly that person is. This is hard to say because some people really try to help you, and most probably that is the reason they are talking to you. So it might be better to say no nicely instead of hard no. Of course, depending on the situation. When you start planning a trip to Japan, you might wonder where in Japan you should put in your itinerary. Let's see from the two major patterns of travel. One staying in one region, either Tokyo or Osaka, and another one is the route going both of these regions, which is often called the golden route of Japan travel. First and probably the easiest itinerary is staying in one area, either Tokyo or Osaka, and make a day trip or one night trip to surrounding areas. This saves you cost of long distance travel. And if you stay in one or two accommodations in the city for a long period, you can be freed of carrying big luggage s around, which can be a major headache during travel. Then, which is better, Tokyo or Osaka? That is a very difficult question. Having both of my parents from Kansai, trying to be fair, I still cannot say which is better. Tokyo and Osaka is very different. The answer is different depends on what you like. If you like city culture, it's a mistake to think Osaka can be a substitute of Tokyo as a city. Osaka is characteristic, but Tokyo is exceptional as a city. There is Mount Fuji, Hakone, and more closer to dynamic nature. But on the other hand, Kansai region and Osaka is full of treasures and traditions. There are no cities like Kyoto and Nara in Tokyo, and the area Osaka, Kyoto, Nara, Kobe, each city is full of variety and characteristics. Kansai is full of gems that Tokyo doesn't have. But the best solution is To find out which you like with your eyes by going both cities. That is why there is a typical route that Japan travels Golden Route. There is a Golden Route that many travelers follow similar patterns in Japan. That is flying to Tokyo, go to Hakone Hot Springs for one night, and head to Kyoto or Osaka, making a day trip to Nara, 
and some travelers go to Hiroshima, some travelers come back to Tokyo and leave Japan or leave from Kansai Airport in Osaka. I think this is a nice comprehensive route. You can see two modern cities of Tokyo and Osaka, tradition in Kyoto and Nara, and nature and hot springs in Hakone. You can also add different day trips during your stay in Tokyo and Osaka, such as Kamakura, Nikko, Kaguchiko from Tokyo, and Himeji Katsu and Koya san from Osaka. And of course, you can make your own plan from zero or arrange this golden route to suit to your taste. This golden route is not covering every part of Japan. Popular place has reason to be popular, but it might be also good to seek if you can add some destinations that is off the beaten path. Let me quickly introduce you to different parts of Japan from north. Hokkaido is the northern island of Japan. Sapporo is the biggest city in Hokkaido, and you can explore Hokkaido from there. The island is known for delicious seafoods, dairy products, and farm produces. Hokkaido also has major ski resorts such as Niseko and Furano. You can also do extensive travel by renting a car or by train to the different parts of the island, from the northernmost city of Wakanai to Hakodate in the south. Tohoku is the northern part of Honshu Island. The biggest city is Sendai. But there are other areas such as Aomori, Yamagata, and more that each of them has a different character. Tohoku is known for its natural beauty, rich traditions, and peaceful countryside atmosphere. Travelers are attracted to Tohoku for its stunning landscapes, including mountains, forests, and lakes. The mountain areas of Tohoku is fully covered by deep snow in winter, and there are major ski resorts such as Zao, which is also known for the hot springs. In the center of Honshu Island, there are mountain areas such as Nagano and Gifu. This area has three Japanese Alps, North, Central, and South. This region is perfect balance between traditional charm and outdoor adventures. Matsumoto Castle, Zenkoji in Nagano, and Takayama in Gifu is a popular spot. The village along the old route connects Tokyo and Kyoto like Magomejuk and Tsumagojuk that you can cross the prefectures on foot and see how people used to travel in old Japan are also getting very popular recently. In the West Japan, Seto Inna Bay is a place known for its beautiful coastline. There are three routes connecting the Honshu Island and Shikoku Island. The coastal area has some popular destinations like Naoshima that you can enjoy peaceful island scenery. Sain is the area in the other side of the mountain from Okayama and Hiroshima. Sanin is one of the most rural areas in Japan, but there are some gems like Matsue Castle, Izumo Taisha Shrine. Kyushu has a major city of Fukuoka and Nagasaki, and lots of hot springs and dynamic volcanic sceneries in the mountain and beautiful coastal sceneries. The island south of Kyushu continues to the World Heritage Island of Yakushima, Amami, and further down to Okinawa that you can experience different island culture and cuisine. I haven't visited many places in Japan yet. I have bucket full of bucket list, but I have some informative vlog style travel guide in my library, so please check them if you like this video. Thank you. Your itinerary also depends on how much time you can have in Japan. If you travel just one area, you can travel in five days or so just to experience Japan. This might be the case, especially when you get around different Asian countries, including Japan. If you only visit Japan, it seems 10 days to 2 weeks are the most popular length of the travel. But if you like to take time slowly and can take days off, some travelers stay for months and stay here like living. After doing some research and you get some idea where you like to visit, something greatly influences your itinerary and budget is the transportation in Japan. After looking around the transportations, you might have to give up some destinations. So, finding transportation is as important as deciding destinations. Majority of travelers enter Japan from Tokyo's two international airports, Haneda and Narita, and Osaka's Kansai International Airport. Some might enter Japan from Nagoya, Sapporo, Fukuoka. Any of these airports has direct train access that you can go to the city center. In each city, you can get around either by JR Line, the city's train system such as subways and private railways. In Japan, there are many different train companies that use different systems, so it's a little complicated. To solve that, major metropolitan areas have its own IC cards, for example, in Tokyo, Suika, in Osaka, Ikoka, that you can top up the card and use it for almost all trains. 
without purchasing the ticket. It doesn't have much discount function, but it's convenient that you don't have to worry about purchasing the right ticket every time you get on trains. But then, do you have to get so many IC cards when you travel across Japan? You don't have to worry about that, because IC card can be used in other cities too. For example, you can use IC cards that you got in Tokyo in Okinawa's monorail too, and buses in Kyoto too. Well, not always, I can use it in the bus in Nagano city. When you travel between cities, the most common transportation is Shinkansen, a high speed train network in Japan. You can also use airplane and highway buses. There used to be lots of night trains to different parts of the country, but all were finished. And the only train left is Sunrise that goes to Izumo in Shimane and Takamatsu in Kagawa Prefecture. Trains in Japan is expensive. It can be easily go above a thousand dollars if you go across the country. So now what you might want to consider is Japan Rail Pass. That is specifically made for foreign tourists to make it easy to travel across the country. And during the pass period, you can travel unlimitedly on the JR trains, which is a former Japan National Railway. Not all trains are JR lines in Japan, and some Shinkansen are excluded from the pass, but it covers most of the long distance rail networks in Japan. If you like to make a single ride from places to places for low cost, highway bus is one of the choice. Usually, the price of bus is much lower than the regular train fare. The major concern is it takes time and tiring, so not for everyone. If you like to minimize the time you are sitting on the seat, airplane is another choice. There are two major carriers in Japan, Japan Airline and ANA are flying to almost all regions and islands in Japan, but prices are not always favorable for minor routes. If you like to save more, you might be able to purchase early or find low cost carrier. Japan has similar low cost carriers such as Peach and Jetstar. The con is, route is limited, and in Tokyo it uses Narita Airport, which can take time just to get to the airport. Airports in countryside can also be located in the far away from the city center, while Fukuoka Airport is only two stations from the major station of Hakata. Hiroshima Airport is located far away from the city center, and it takes about one hour by bus. But even with these transportations, some places are not accessible or takes too long to get there. In that case, you can also consider rental car. It's not a popular method among international tourists, considering the process of getting the international driver's license and risk of driving in a new country. In Japan, you drive left side. But some places like Okinawa and Hokkaido and southern Kyushu, renting a car makes a big difference on what you can see. There are pros and cons for each transportation, so you can investigate maps and trains and choose your favorite ways. Something greatly influences your travel experience is accommodations. Japan has regular hotels you are familiar with, from economy to luxury, from Holiday Inn to Hilton, but you see many more different types of hotels that are unique to Japan. One is ryokan, that you find mostly in hot spring town or some in traditional places like Kyoto and Nara. Ryokan usually has public bath and you can have a plan with two meals included. There are many types of ryokan, traditional style that you sleep with futon on Japanese room, and they serve foods inside the room. While some big ryokans in major hot spring town offer a buffet dinner, and some has a bed in the room instead of Japanese room. Even though you might find it challenging to be completely naked in public onsen, or more, you have to see tons of Japanese people without clothes on. Some ryokan has private baths for couples or family, or sometimes even in the room. You'll find many types of ryokan. The small family-owned facility, sometimes called minshuku, can also be seen in countryside town. Another one unique to Japan is business hotel. It's like the roadside motel in the United States, but business hotel is usually near the station and has super small room. It's usually clean and has small but well-functioned room. The major business hotel chain is Toyoko Inn, Super Hotel, Appa, Daiwa Roinet Hotel, Richmond Hotel, and a lot more others. If you seek more budget-friendly super economy hotel, you might be able to consider Capsule Hotel. If you like to communicate with other travelers more, you might want to use youth hostels. For accommodation, you can also find shukubo that you can stay at the Buddhism temple. In the morning, you can attend morning chant. You can feel special that you are in the part of the culture. So after you decide your destination and transportation roughly, you might want to start looking into the accommodations and find your favorite one. 
I hope it could give you some idea about Japan trip. Thank you for watching. Have a great trip to Japan. Have a great week. Until the next video.